Okay, we just discussed the, uh, <clears throat> the meaning of an absolute value as it relates to inequality. And there was two conditions that uh, we talked about, and that is the first one and second one. This takes time to sink in though. For a lot of students, they don't wanna put the time in to think about that. It's important you think about that though. Now granted, lecture may go too quick for you and it doesn't give you an opportunity to think. And that's where study time comes in, that you spend time outside the classroom thinking about what's been presented. You may wanna watch these little side videos over here if that's helpful. But I'm gonna go through examples. Again, these videos will be published at the end of the week. So if things go too quickly, you can always watch it at the end of the week. Or if you prefer, you can simply watch these side videos instead. But I'm gonna go through the lecture now. How do I do that? I'm gonna to go to the whiteboard now. And we're gonna do the examples of absolute value inequality. All right, give it a second to come up. And there we are. So week two, we're starting the examples and question number one. So I'm reading it and I'll pull it to the side for you. And you know, bottom line, it really, it doesn't look like a bad question, but do I understand how to do it? I don't know. Let's take a look. So what do they want me to do? They want me to solve for the variable, all right? Graph it and express the solution using interval notation. We'll go through all three things. Graph it, I'm um, to solve for the variable graph and express it as an interval, an interval notation. One thing is I need to be able to read this thing. I want to say the absolute value of this thing X has to be within seven units of the origin or equal to seven units from the origin. So what does that mean to me? Well, let me write this down. What that means to me is X must be between seven and minus seven inclusive. So I've solved for X, I've done that part. I've solved for the variable, right? That's done. What's the next thing on the graph it? Well, number line, I put the numbers down. What are the numbers? Minus seven and seven. What's X? X is between those. It says X is less than seven and X is greater than minus seven. It means it's between them, but it could also be equal to those. This is what's known as the graph of it. That's done. Let's express it in an interval notation. Well, we should be familiar with this. Minus seven, we have conventions up to seven. That's interval notation. All right, let's go to the next page. That's where the answer is gonna be, by the way. And I'm gonna do problem number two now. So let's take a look. Problem number two. And let me just uh, pull two to the side for you. Now, you know what, I'll, I'll pull the whole thing to the side too with the, with the answer there. Now let's blow it up and see if I can do it. All right, now what does this one say? It says the absolute value has to be more than seven units from the origin. Now, what does that mean? Well, let me write this down for you. It means that X could be greater than seven or X could be less than minus seven. All right, so I'm gonna say it's solved for the variable. Now I wanna graph it. Put the numbers down. There's two numbers down, they go on order, minus seven and seven. Let's read the first one. What does the first one say? X must be greater than seven, which means it's over here. What's the second one say? This is an or a union. It says it has to be less than minus seven, which is over here. What's that look like in intervals? Minus infinity up to minus seven, not including union seven off to infinity. All right, that's the intervals. This is the graph over here. I see that right here. Okay, let's go to the next one, which is gonna be, let's see, number, I, I guess we just did number two. I guess we'll go to number three now, right? I'm gonna pull this on the side. And again, my, my objective here, whoops, my objective here is to see if I can understand uh, what I'm reading. All right, I know it's difficult. All right, it's number three now. It says solve for the variable, graph. Eh, it's the same as over and over again. Now, what does this one say? It says that this thing here, the absolute value of this thing here must be within seven units of the origin. I'll write that down. So that means X minus 10 must be within seven units. All right, well, I got to solve that now. And how do I do that? I'm going to add 10. This is a double inequality, watt, uh, but it's through, there's three sides to it. So I'm going to add 10 to all three sides. And what would you get? We well, get three, X in the middle and 17. It's now solved. Why is it solved? I can read that. What does it say? X is less than or equal to 17 or X is greater than or equal to three. I'm gonna put down the graph. The numbers go down three and 17. And what do I have over here? X could be equal to three. 
and x could be equal to 17. What else could it be? It could be between those two. This is the graph, fairly simple. Let's put the intervals down. The intervals are going to be from three up to seven. I'm sorry, 17. Okay, let's go to the next one, number four. And number four, again, you're reading these things, hopefully you get an idea that there's a pattern to these things. And this one read as, well, it's read as, let's see, this thing here must be greater than seven units. Let's put this down. So X minus 10, greater than seven, or that's a key word, it's a compound, X minus 10, less than minus seven. Okay, let's keep going. How do I do this? I'm gonna add 10 to both sides of these two different inequalities. And what do you get? You would get, let's see, X greater than 17 or X less than three, All right? This is a solution because I can read it. How would I read that X is greater than 17 or X is less than three? Let's put the graph down. Two numbers go down, the number three and the number 17. Let's read the first one. What does it say? X is greater than 17. What's the second one say? X is less than three. That's the graph. That's done. Let's put the intervals down. Minus infinity up to three. Union 17 to infinity. By the way, if you're struggling with interval notation, you should not be in this section. You need to go back and study the prior week. All right. We look at the answer and we see that. All right. Let's go to number five now. And number five, let me just, you know, kind of box it off for you and pull it to the side. Again, they may be getting slightly more difficult, but not substantially so. All right, so number five, what, what do you have over here? Well, you have something that must be within four units, right? Let's put this down. So let's write that down. So three minus two X has to be within four units. I got that written down now. This is, a, this is a compound inequality. It's read with the word and. I'm going to subtract three from all sides. And what would you get? Well, let's see. You get minus seven, minus two X in the middle, and you get one in the end. Now, what do I have to do? Which is really tricky for some students to follow this. You need to divide all sides. There's three sides, by the way, by minus two. Now, why is that tricky? Remember, and this goes back to week number one, if you divide it by a negative number or multiply by a negative number, the direction of the inequality changes. So what would you get? Well, if you divide seven minus seven by minus two, you would get seven halves. The direction of the inequality changes now. If you divide minus two by minus, I'm sorry, minus two X by minus two, you would get X. Direction of inequality changes. If you divide one by minus two, you get minus one half. Now this might seem strange to you, but it's still readable. It's solved. What does it say? X is greater than or equal to minus one half and X is less than or equal to seven halves. So what am I gonna do? Number line goes down. The numbers on the number line go down in order. So minus one half and seven halves. It could be equal to minus one half, clearly states that, and it could equal to seven halves. What else is it? It's in between those two. That's the graph. What's the interval notation? Minus one half comma, seven halves. Okay. Uh, it's gonna sound redundant to you, but I, I wanna, again, I wanna emphasize to you that what happens to a lot of students is they, I'll say, oh, this goes too fast. I can't follow, I can't follow, I can't follow. You can watch these videos at the end of the week if you have to, or you can watch the spot videos on the side. The key here though, is that it may be in your best interest just to pay attention and then go back over this at a later time to see if you can figure out what we're doing. Right. But again, the speed of students varies greatly. Some students are really fast at this. Other students are very slow. I do believe that everyone is capable of doing this material. It's not rocket science. All right. That was number five. What am I, that mean? I'm going to go to number six now and pull it to the side again and pull it to the side. And push this over here. And let me see if I can do it. Ooh, this one looks tough. So someone says, why does this one look more different than, the, uh, uh, different than the others? It's because the absolute value is not isolated. So what I would do right here is I would probably start the game by adding five to both sides. And what would you get? Something pretty simple. 
the absolute value of three minus two X is greater than, well, if I took minus one plus five, I'd get four. I have to understand what this is saying though. And what does it say? The absolute value of this thing here must be greater than four from the origin. So I'll put this over here. So three minus two X greater than four or three minus two X is less than minus four. It is so important you can have some understanding of what you're reading. Because if you understand what you read, you could actually write it down without memorizing. However, memorization is okay too. Let's take a look at this, see if we can do it. I'm gonna solve it. I'm gonna subtract three from both sides here. I'm gonna subtract three from both sides here. All right, looks difficult. Not really. What do you get? Minus two X, that's easy. Or this would be minus two X and I would be minus seven. Here comes the tricky part. What are we gonna do now? Divide both sides. I'll write this down for you. Divide both sides by minus two. Let's do that. What do you get in the left side? X, direction of inequality changes. We're dividing by a negative number, minus one half, or we're dividing the other one also by minus two. You would get X, direction of inequality changes, and minus seven divided by minus two is seven halves. I put my number line down. My numbers go in the number line. There's two numbers in order, minus one half and seven halves. What is X? X is less than minus one half, which is over here. Or that's a union, by the way, X is greater than seven halves, which means over here. Let's put down the intervals. That's minus infinity, minus one half, union seven halves to infinity intervals. All right, solution, graph, intervals. Let's look at the story, see if we got the right answer, and of course we did. That was what, number six, right? Yeah, now we're gonna do number seven. All right, let me see if I can do number seven for you. All right, let me just pull it on the side. All right, we'll look at the answer later. All right, what am I gonna do first? Well, I'm gonna make a recommendation, subtract three from both sides. And what would you get? Well, let's take a look. You would get five times the absolute value of two X minus three, less than 20. Now what would I do? I would actually divide both sides by five. That's a positive number, it has no effect on inequality. What do you get? Absolute value of two X minus three. Whoops, I, I, sorry about that. 20 divided by five is four. What do you do now? Interpret what you're seeing. What does it say? This must be within four units. So I'll put this over here, two X minus three within four units, which means between minus four and four. I'm gonna add three to both sides without writing it down. And I'm gonna divide both, all sides by two without writing it down. Number line goes down, minus one half, seven halves, and X is between those. What's the interval gonna be? Minus one half up to seven halves. Again, look at the answers. And I wanna point out the answers are right over here. And I feel comfortable about that. I'm getting the same answers and you should too. All right, thank you.